So, this is a little unusual. I'm doing an offline recording, I'm not streaming this. Dragon Quest Builders 2 is a game that came out a few years ago with elements of Dragon Quest and Minecraft and Stardew Valley. And it became probably my favorite game ever. Uh, we, d we haven't really streamed it. I did one stream of it but while I was playing through it for the first time, but I had uh, unwittingly chosen the worst possible time to do it because I did like a blind stream of where I was in the story and I happened to be at the one part of the story that had no building in it. So instead, I have decided to do another video. This time I'm going to be just looking around my world, kind of showing off the meat of the game. He did. Shout out to Akira Toriyama. Recently passed. Also a good occasion to uh, be doing this video. But, uh, yeah, I've spent a long, long time in this game. Perfected the achievements. Uh, Dragon Quest Builders 1 recently came out on Steam with a lot of uh, quality of life upgrades over its original releases. Still would recommend just getting two. If anything in this video interests you, definitely pick up this game and try it. It's got a free demo that's got like hours and hours and hours of content, so you'll, you'll know if it's something that you'll like before you have to buy it. So, the previous video I did, which I may unlist, I'll probably keep it, like, I'll put it at the, maybe link it at the end of this one. But, uh, that was in the middle of the story. This is, like, super end game, And in fact, I'm gonna be going backwards, kind of from, like, the, the last stuff you can do in the game. Backwards. Just because I want to show off, like, the creative abilities in the game. Also, don't mind me, this is like, this, this is like the, the total user, super flat world island that you can make. So, it is like a little island paradise and everyone just walks around in a swimsuit. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Uh. So, simi again, similar to the mi last couple Minecraft videos that uh, we did. I'm kind of just going to walk around and show off the stuff that I've made. But before that... There is one single little corner of the island that I had not uh, I had not finished yet as of the last time I played this game. So, I take the opportunity to show off the building a little bit. That is great. I love that you can do that. I love that there's this fast building option that does not exist in Minecraft. There's a lot of quality of life stuff in this game that does not exist in Minecraft and other similar, you know, buildy games. You see my buddy here. At first person and third person both exist. You can get little animal buddies to help you out. This guy is amazingly useful because once you have him, you can just fly. It's great. High mobility game. And get off of him, you get a little glider. This is something you get in, like, chapter one. Not, like, at the very end of the game, like in Minecraft, when there's nothing left to do by the time you have it. Uh. Another thing that's neat about this game that separates it from others of its kind are the fact that there are, uh, there's little Dragon Quest NPCs. There's characters you meet throughout the game. That you can meet, you can invite them to your island, you can put them on wherever island you want to put them on. They usually have more dialogue than that. They don't, they, they don't have, like, custom dialogue for the, uh, the user islands, like the end game stuff, but, uh, they all have their own little voices and dialogue and everything, and you can even put them to work. You can equip them with, like, uh, you can equip them with weapons to defend against monster attacks. Of course, there aren't any here, but throughout the story, you can use them to defend against monster attacks. Uh, 
I actually ma I made this before the video. So I built a building, and this is a thing that you can do. You can uh, save blueprints of pre-existing constructs, things that you made, and rebuild them as much as you want to. Made a little garage for the vehicle here. And... If I put a chest with the correct ingredients in it, I don't even need to build it. They'll go to work doing it for me. Or removing the things that I placed that shouldn't be there, either. I may have put some blocks that I didn't mean to. So I'll let them continue doing that, and I'll go, uh, I'll go walk around and show off little area that I've made. There's a lot of blocks in this game. There's a lot more than something like Minecraft. You can get very, very decorative, very fancy. You don't usually need to, but it's nice to have the option. Let me go into first person. There's lots of uh, different types of rooms. Different recipes that you can, uh, you can make with different functions. There are some NPCs that will uh, come to shops like this and man them to, like, be workers. It's not something to the degree of, like, uh, Rimworld or Dwarf Fortress, but there is a degree of, like, you know, civilization management in this. There's a lot of stuff to do, and I appreciate having stuff to do. Basically, this, this island, I set out to, like, make as many of the room recipes as I could. Stuff like aquariums, I got the different types of water, the different types of fish. Various types of water just for personal use in case I need them. Oh, a line for the. Nope. We don't need to see that. A line for the bathroom. Yes, you can poop in this game. Yes, NPCs can poop. In fact, you can collect the poop to use in recipes. Excuse me. This is a weird game. Dragon Quest is a weird series, but I kind of appreciate that about it. A lot of these rooms aren't, like, immediately obvious what they are or what they do. Unless you've played the game. But, uh... I spent a long time on them. I'm proud of them. Again, this is, like, uh... This is the super end game. This is when you get the full creative freedom to do whatever you want to. You get, you can make an island all your own and just build whatever you want on it. Even a massage parlor. Sorry, a cheeky relaxation room. Dragon Quest's word for sexy is cheeky. That th there's a lot of cheeky in Dragon Quest. I actually recently started playing the uh, original series for the first time, because I hadn't played them before. After Toriyama died, I, de I decided to, like, properly check them out. I'm currently in the middle of, uh, two on the NES. Uh, the restaurant... There's cooking, NPCs will come and, like, make food. I didn't have to make this. If, if you have, like, food in a chest or, like, you saw farms outside, they will make the food and stock it so that you can, we can take it. I'm gonna take some burgers. generally put a lot of, like, uh, utility rooms around the uh, perimeter. 
We've got a barn for storing all of the uh, all the crops. There's like 17 different types of crops in the game, all for use in different food recipes. It's like uh, die works is a type of building. You can have NPCs make dyes. And also put vegetables and swimsuits in the dye chests for some reason. I kind I do wish there was a way to better micromanage uh, where NPCs will put stuff. Because there's kind of not. Got a big old traditional barn full of animals. Uh, you can pet the dog. Very important. Got some uh, friendly monsters. You can befriend monsters. Obviously. Not all of them, but some of them. Got a little uh, town hall. Let me pull up the map real quick. I tried to make a point to make it like a little ring. Not all, like, types of buildings or attractions have map icons. I think there's only six that end up with them, and I tried to arrange them in, like, a little hexagon here. Usually, in throughout most of the game, monsters will spawn and attack your uh, colony or whatever you do. But uh, you unlock a thing eventually that just stops monsters from spawning, so you can just you can just have a, like a like a creative area. There is no creative mode per se. I can't fly around. I can't have like uh, infinite materials. I do have to work for everything that uh, I use and make this with. But resources are generally abundant. There are there's a system where you can like go to randomly generated items to get materials. If you do certain side quests, you can get infinite amounts of certain materials. For example, I have uh, infinite wood because I've done one of those side quests. I have infinite stone, etc., etc., and that's great. I love that you can just get infinite amounts of stuff that. You know, it's just kind of a you kind of expect to have and you need for more complex recipes. A wizard's workshop. Armory. Is it an armory or is it uh, this this room? No, it's, it's the armory. So if I put stuff in this chest, they'll wear it. Like corn. They'll wear corn. That, that, that was a joke, but they will wear, like, armor or clothes that I put in an armory chest. There's a lot of rooms with, like, actual functions and things that you can uh, use to interact with villagers with. I'll get to the castle. Again, my main... Not all rooms are useful, but my main point in this island... The, my main goal was to make a room of every type... Just because I wanted to fill out the, uh, you know, the, the, the room decks, basically. What's back here? Nothing. Okay. Probably saw I have a uh, little mine track that the NPCs will automatically use to get around. I don't need to, like, provide mine, tra mine carts for them or anything. It just, if you have a mine tra cart system, they will be... They're smart enough to, like, use it. There she goes. I wonder where she's headed. They, they, don't, uh, they don't build at night, so the, uh, the garage will have to wait until tomorrow for completion. They made good progress. It's almost done. What's this? Public bathroom. Why? Okay, so we have this big, nice, well, nice public bathroom. It's not terribly private if you use one of these, but uh, it's better than, like, the tiny little hole under the swimming pool we saw earlier. I guess just no one happens to be over here.
a lot of these smaller buildings are uh, individual houses for individual residents. You can get pretty stylish, stylistic. I tried to have like a different aesthetic for each house. Wet room. Oh yeah, I I doubled some. Uh, I doubled some uh, personal rooms. For uh, for some of the more obscure room recipes. Rooms have different. Uh, There, there is, like, a point to decorating, is another thing I appreciate about this game. Rooms have a certain level of fanciness represented by the stars, depending on what decorations and how many you put in the room. They have a certain atmosphere, depending on what types of decorations you put in the room. And every single NPC has their own uh, preferences for room size, ambience, and, and uh, fanciness. For whatever reason, I decided to put a resident with a very high, a relatively high fanciness requirement in a swamp. They, they live in a cheeky swamp, but it's okay. It's full of gold, so it's still fancy. She's happy. She likes it. Oh, is this like a lava room? I made, I made someone an evil room. Someone who with even fancier demands... A flamboyant magma chamber. Who's in here? Yeah. Hello? Oh. oh. Good morning. I had to put a lot of stuff in here to meet the fanciness requirement. What is this? This isn't a house, is it? Enormous cheeky player. It's someone's... Oh, okay. Yeah, this is someone's room. It's an enormous cheeky playroom that is also a bedroom, despite not having walls. I just, I just gave her, uh... I just gave her, like, tavern doors. It's fine. She's happy. Solid gold. She better be happy. Chill out room. I don't think any of the music in this game is original. It is, uh. It's taken from other more recent Dragon Quest games like, uh, 9 or 10 or such. But it's very nice. It's very nice music. It's, uh, fully orchestrated. Hello. There's there's masked muscle men just kind of walk around. Just being masked muscle men. He's happy. He's having a good time. Small, cool, creepy conservatory. This is someone's room. Whose room is it? I don't know who that is, but I hope he's happy living here. <laughs> a slime? A slimy room. Who does this belong to? Oh, okay, it's her. She's just Gollum. If if you know, you know. If you don't know, you you play the game. You'll find out. That's just that's just Gollum. <laughs> There's an old lady who is Gollum in this game. And they finished the garage. That's nice. Got a uh, little types of gardens and parks that you can make in addition to, like, indoor rooms. I dedicated this center area to, uh, doing all the gardens and plazas. The controls are a little different between Builders 1 and Builders 2, and, uh, I most recently 100%ed Builders 1 on Steam, so I'm still kind of getting used to the, the Builders 2 controls again. Suspicious spa. Yeah, I bathe in blood to keep myself clean. Oh, 
little snow biome. What is this? There's a wall in this one. Botanical garden. Okay. It's been, it's been quite a while since I built all this. So this is as much me going back and remembering as it is showing it off for the video. Monumental Museum. What is this, a little cabin? Small natural porch. Okay. I, I wouldn't think a porch would be, like, a room type, because, you know, a porch is not a room, but I guess it counts. How, how do they expect that to make it, make, how would they expect you to make a porch in, that look like, looks like a porch? Maybe if you use, like, uh, like one of the, one of the welcome mats like I did the, in the plazas? I don't know, that's weird. station. I think everyone just kind of goes back and forth between the castle and the restaurant. Everyone just kind of goes to the restaurant to eat all day. Well room. So called because there is a well in it. Most of these aren't very good bedrooms. I kind of had to I kind of had to force it a little bit in order to get all of these room recipes represented. Pot chamber, a chamber of pots. Who lives here? Uh Clayton. I don't like him. I don't remember many details, but I remember not liking someone by the name Clayton. This is totally unnecessary. This is just something I made because I needed to fill the space. There's a little little rock fountain. Meditation station. There were some DLC for this game. Some of this stuff is like uh I think the like the the samurai stuff is part of DLC. But I also think it just comes with the PC version. I think it was only DLC on, like, the, the PlayStation release or something. Either way, this game has just an absurd amount of content. I don't know how many hundreds of hours that I've, uh, I've, I've ended up putting into it in the end. But I eagerly anticipate a potential Dragon Quest Builders 3. I, I would be very happy with that. This is one of those games like, uh, the Thousand Year Door remake is coming out soon. And I realized, thinking about it, I can't think of a whole lot that I would like to see improved in Thousand Year Door. It's just a very well-designed game, overall. And that's kind of how I feel about this one. I can't think of a lot that they could do better with it. It is a very dialogue-heavy game. That, that is a common complaint with it. There is a lot of talking. Which, as far as, like, game problems to have go... Complaining about too much content seems like not the worst problem to have. I have a graveyard. Let's look at the garage, now that they finished it. I made this earlier. This area was, like, empty before uh, before today, but I made a little garage. And then I, t I made the blueprint, and I tore it down so that we could see that they... Yep, they they'll build stuff for you. And I love that. I love that the NPCs, the villagers, like, do stuff in this game. Also, huge inventory. I am, like... Again, hundreds and hundreds of hours in this game, so I have, am only now finally reaching the limits of my inventory. 
But it's so nice having all this just pocket space and not having to worry about inventory management. Let me put all this away. You do eventually get to a point where, well, like where I'm at, that you have to, uh, like, think about your inventory space. Put stuff in chests here and there, but for most of the game, it's just not something you have to think about. And that is, that's so nice that you don't have to think about it. Uh, there's a couple more houses in the center that I didn't look at yet. Like this. This, this is, I made this sand, cast, sand castle for, uh, two characters. This is, this is a two-house plot. But they're cute together, so I, I, I connected their houses. I gave them a shared plot. Uh, vaguely evil citadel looking houses. Less than vaguely, but very, very blatantly evil citadel looking houses with a skull cauldron. Sorry, a summoning chamber. I'm sure whoever is using that is using it responsibly. Pumping station. So those are all those are all like human resident houses. As I said, you can also find monsters to befriend and uh, invite them to your little colony. I think what I ended up doing was that I housed the monsters in the castle. I wish monsters functioned as like fully human NPCs. Especially because a lot of the story of this game revolves around like human monster relations. But uh they don't. Sadly, monsters do not have quite as much detail in how much you can, uh, like, interact and, like, deal with their room preferences as compared to the human characters. But I still tried to... I, I did as much as I could with them, regardless. Uh, I think originally, well, we'll get to the, like, the main, the starting story island later. I had originally made two whole castles, one with, like, all the human stuff in it and one with all the monster stuff. And then later I decided to move everything to this one single super island, and I made, like, a castle that was split in half with, like, the the human castle aesthetics on one side and the, the monster castle aesthetics on the other side. With uh, three throne rooms to match. chamber. Oh, hello, Mr. Slime. What are you doing? Just hanging out back here? Imperial bedroom. I think this is Malroth's, yeah. The series does tie into the uh, canon of the original Dragon Quest games in an interesting way. Dragon Quest Builders 1 is based on Dragon Quest 1, or Dragon Warrior in America. And uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2 is based on Dragon Quest 2. With uh, Hargon, Malroth, uh, them all being like names of the villains in Dragon Quest 2 on NES. Builders 1 was interesting because it took place in, like, a fallen hero timeline. At the end of Dragon Quest 1, there's a thing, kind of like in Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, where the game ends with the bad guy saying, Hey, did join don't fight me, join me, we could join forces. And you have the yes-no option. 
So Builders takes place in a world where the hero says yes and the world falls into darkness. And I thought that's cool. Not a lot of games do the fallen hero timeline thing. It's just, like, Zelda does it kind of, but we, we know Nintendo doesn't actually care about the Zelda timeline. Uh, this is some monster's room. Choo Choo, a slime. Slimes like water. I can't, does it show the, hold on, if I hit select. Yeah, I can see the, like, a, a little icon of, of who lives here. It's a little, little hammer fella. Cheeky room for Rick the zombie. Did I name him that, or is that his? I don't think I can name characters. I can name I can name animals, like I can name cats and dogs and cows and things. I don't think I can name like monsters. Now there is just a zombie that looks like Rick and is named Rick. Okay, so not all of the not all of the NPCs are in uh, have their own houses down there. there there's some of them that have uh, rooms in the castle up here. War room. I hope I'm being thorough. This is a lot like the, uh... Oh, years ago when we were doing the Jax channel, I was showing off, like, a, uh... Like a castle dungeon I made in Minecraft. I got lost in that thing. It was, t it was too big, and it had been too long since I built it. I'm kind of experiencing that now. Where I just kind of... I'm just hoping that I'm hitting every room, because this castle is so big... That, uh, it's just, it's a lot to cover. So we have floor one, floor two. Let's go up to floor three. Hello. Just, just King. His name is King. He's the King. He doesn't live in the, any of the, any of the, the royal, he doesn't live in the royal bedchamber, because I do not acknowledge him as King, but... I gave him a nice, a nice, like, gold room with a coffin to sleep in. Because I guess he likes... Yeah, he wanted a flamboyant room. The human king wanted, like, an, an evil citadel for his room. He's got kind of weird taste. <laughs> a, a large, cute training room. The cuddliest place ever to uh, beef up, fight some training dummies. Get speared in the abdomen. Oh, that goes outside. And there's the other half of the third floor. With presumably monster rooms. Yep. A shabby throne room for Griswold the skeleton. Monsters don't get normal beds. They have to sleep on, like, animal beds. That kind of- that kind of sucks. It really defeats the purpose of, like, the game story saying, Hey, we monsters are people, too. Nah, give them a fucking pile of hay to sleep in. They don't deserve better. There's like a... It's like UFO stuff for this room. With eyeball ceiling. I forgot how weird I made this room. And I don't remember why. Exhibition room. Just skeleton. He's he's the curator. I put a museum in the castle. Look, look at Lulu. She's training. She's getting swole. You can uh, yeah, you can you can take photos. There's a photo mode in the game, so you can take a picture of Corin and uh, put it on the wall if you want to. You're doing a good job, Mr. Curator. Keep up the good work. Just 
big empty room. A little gremlin fella. It's like a it's like a monster church. I think I had like pews or seats or something in here, but then it was too fancy. This guy doesn't like a room to be too fancy. It's kind of a weird thing that like a lot of vi villagers have a preference for a room that is not too fancy, but a lot of them do. Uh, this was the third floor. Is there anything on the fourth floor? Yeah, there's a little more. I think. So this goes outside. This goes around the perimeter. And there's uh, four towers with stairs at each uh, extreme of the castle. I thought there was another maybe I'm thinking of the other the pre the other island's castle. I'm thinking of a previous castle. I wish that I can I turn the UI off, I wonder. don't think that I can. I can for, like, photos, but not for, like, not for, like, uh, walking around that I'm aware of. Look at how nice this looks. Look how many pieces are in this game. And again, it's not just that you can decorate, it's that you're rewarded for decorating. I love that. I, I love that this game, like, incentivizes you to actually, like, play it and use everything in the game. Oh. No, we don't need to look at that that room. Officially, that room doesn't exist. I'll go up there later. Uh, venerable bedroom. Who does this belong to? Molly. Oh, they're like a like an old lady that I met in prison. Here? Yes, there's one more bedroom. With... Oh, it's the swimsuit nun. There's a little chapel for the humans over here. Enormous cool chapel. Excuse me, let me eat a burger. Church of the Burger. In order for a room to count as a room in this game, it needs to be a door. It needs to be too tall without any gaps like this, and it needs to have a door. Which is why a space like this does not count as a room. But uh, this chapel does. Was there a similar room? Oh no, the other, the monster equivalent of the chapel was the, 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 the no-no rooms, the ones we don't talk about. And we definitely don't use. I think these are the tops of the towers. Yeah, the towers go up to these uh, these four little corner rooms. I think there's. Well, I think there's a little more stuff. I think there's something at, like, the very tippy top of the castle. If I can remember how to go up there. Here it is. Yeah, there's these little, uh, little stairs up on both sides. Don't think there's anything up here. I think there's just the roof of the castle. Skeleton, don't do it. You have so much to live for. Who's going to be the curator without you? Yeah? Alright. Don't do anything crazy. This is the top of the castle. 
Is there anything up in the... in the towers? I think I probably put, like, a little opening that we can glide out of in the top of the towers. Hello? I'm, I'm sorry. I think I interrupted her alone time. She was just looking out the window wistfully. Or she's having trouble pathfinding. One of those, too. Let's uh, fly over to the other tower. Probably very similar. Yeah, it's just it's just the monster equivalent. Malroth is here. Just hanging out in the monster tower. Sadly, I cannot put Malroth in a swimsuit. That took a while, that castle, getting all that built, but uh, it, it was definitely easier with the, uh, the, uh, not the, the blueprint, but like the, the it had, the, it shares a basic design with the castle that I had previously built on the, uh, on the main, the story island. Oh, we already looked at the, at the finished garage, it's over here. There's one other thing I have to show you, but you have to keep it a secret. You might oh, you might have noticed I had uh, I had tracks running inside the castle because I had originally planned on having the system like go through it, and I had to get kind of creative to find a way that you could send a minecart through something without having you know you be able to walk through it. I don't know if I succeeded, but uh, it was irrelevant because the NPCs were sadly not smart enough to use the the track from inside the castle. They would only ever, like, use this station outside of it here. I don't know why. It's great that the NPCs, like, do stuff and they're smarter than, like, nothing at all, but they, it, they could stand to be, like, improved in future iterations. So th th this is the secret. This is my throne room. And you might have noticed that despite having a bedroom for, like, all the other NPC characters, there was not a Zelrog bedroom. Fortunately, lava is kind of a non-issue in this game. I meant I wanted to change tools, not sit down. Yeah, lava is, is not really that dangerous, so I can just... Uh, There we go. I have this secret little area that goes under the throne room into my my room with all the stuff that I'm cooking. Jesse! All this copper and this iron that I have an infinite supply of, but I still have to, like, I have to cook it in order to uh, have the ingots to, to then use. But, uh, Boy, just having infinite stuff is so nice for a game like this. I know I keep saying that, but, uh... Yeah, there's just a little little bunker. It's got a bed. It's got all the various creation stations in the game. With which I can build any of the things that I might need to build in the game. And in addition to the throne room entrance... I got a back door. Don't tell anybody. And that's pretty much... That's this island. That's my whole, uh... That's my whole, like, uh, end game. This is where I want all of my people to live island. It's nice. I'm, I'm glad that I'm able to, uh, like, send everybody here to, uh, live and interact and just, like, not do anything except go to a restaurant and eat all day. Because isn't that what we all really want to do? Oh, I didn't get a good look at, like, this centerpiece. If I hit this... Oh, whoops, nope, didn't want to do that. There we go. That collects all the hearts. The little happiness pellets. 
And all the people. There's all the islanders. All here in one place. Hello, islanders. Oh, y'all y'all got a lot to say. Alright. Back to whatever you were doing, I guess. There's a clock over here that shows the real time. Not not the real time, but the in-game time. I think. It's moving, isn't it? I think it is. A little bit, little by little. Yeah, it's moving. We've got a reasonably long day night cycle in this game. What is this? I don't remember what that does. If anything, on this particular island, but uh, yeah, it's the center, center point of the island. Pretty sure we looked at every uh, every building and everything. Yeah. It's hard to fill up this amount of space. This is you can uh, like choose what size of island you want, and I think this is the biggest of the three sizes. This is one of the uh, randomly generated islands. And again, it's something you unlock uh, fairly late in the game. Ow. This is Brownbeard. He's our sailor friend. He'll take us on his boat where we need to go. He doesn't sound like a pirate at all. Which I guess is appropriate because he's not. So this is the main story island. This is where most players probably build most of their stuff. And we're going to get to that, but uh, I'm, I'm going to look at... Uh, I'm going to take a quick look at my other two uh, islands. You can have up to three islands. Zelysium is the main one. I only, I only really built one major island, but I'm going to take a quick look at the others. And you can, uh, you can replace them with a new island at any time. I had originally planned to have all of my uh, islanders and everything on this main story island. But, uh, I... There were reasons that that was inconvenient, so I ended up, like, making that whole new final island for everybody. Where's... where's my chimera friend? Where'd he go? Do I not get to keep him? I guess he can't come here for some reason. Anyway, back when I was still planning to use that story island for my main base of operations. I made this island basically just to grow stuff. This is the small island size, and I just, I, I made it to, like, I made a little farm. And that's all this island is. <laughs> look, look, golems using doors like like people do. There's a little rest. There's a cute little restaurant here. Very tiny restaurant with a very tiny bathroom. Collect night so No, I don't want to see you, lady. Night soil. They call it. It's just like a little... I, I made a little bed and breakfast to house and feed everyone. This is a much more efficient, compact island. Where people don't have to take a minecart to go around the circumference of the entire thing. They just kind of spend all day in this building. 
and then uh, they come out, work the crops. Apparently fish in these covered holes. I don't know how that works. This lady's magic. Yeah, there's irrigation systems you can use to uh, make the crops more efficient so that they don't need to be watered. And I also kind of ended up using this as, like, just a dumping ground for extra animals if I reached my uh, my cap for how many animals I could have on the on the main islands. So I just send them here, and they, and they, they, they fuck, and I get even more animals. It's just a farm island. It's Farmville. Hello? You having a good time, Mr. Statue? He's having a good time. That's it. That's all there is here. But I wanted to show it off because it's, it's... I like the little bed and breakfast building that I built. The loading times are also, like, not amazing for this game. They're not a death sentence. Also, depending on the power of your system. Look at all the cool stuff people make. I'm proud of what I make, but also, like, <laughs> other people blow me out of the water. <sighs> now, I think my third custom island... I think the Buildertopias are what they called. My, my third Buildertopia island is literally just the dumping ground. I don't remember if I built anything there. But I'll check just to be thorough. I don't know why my Chimera fella friend, why my Chimera friend isn't coming to these islands with me. Oh, there's like a, there's like a, a plot point where there's like a crashed spaceship thing. That's this island. So I just, I, I just kept this island with the crashed ship. This is like a, a story thing that you build at one point. It crashed in the middle of nowhere. So uh, now this is the island of nowhere. And I don't actually use it other than to, like, have the spaceship around. Uh, no, I just, I, I, I send animals that I don't need here anymore. Where maybe eventually I'll slaughter them for food. You can do that. You can, uh, you can, you can breed cows or sheep. Are there any chickens around? There's this pitiful, like, dock with a bunch of beds on it, just so that, like, animals will have a, a reason to, to come here and not wander. I don't think any of them are here, though. I don't think I currently have anything dumped in, uh, in the middle of nowhere. So, let's go back to the, 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 the story island, the Isle of Awakening. So that's all, like, endgame stuff when you have the full freedom to, you know, make your own island, do whatever you want with it, build everything you want. Have the villagers help you farm and build stuff as needed. But throughout most of the game, this is this is the player's home base, is the Isle of Awakening. And it exists in uh, multiple parts. This is the biggest island in the game. I think. Do I have a minecart?
Anyone who has played the demo or started the game recognizes this area. I don't know why I made a little, like, tea set. If this was, like, part of a mission or something. Must have made it for some reason. Uh, inventory. Minecart. Surely I have a minecart. With all the stuff I have? No. I'm not positive. I'm, I, I'm not... Don't know for sure where it would be. I think it would be at the at the end, towards the end, because this is the this is minecart stuff. I don't have a minecart. All right. Is there a chest with a minecart? Do I have to make one? No, I don't have to make one. Thankfully, uh, this game is one that uh, like if you have stuff in a chest like anywhere, it will draw from that. Another amazing quality of life feature that I wish more games did. I don't need the metal one. Wood's fine. There we go. We got a minecart. It's that easy. Alright. Away we go. Yeah, keep up. Loser. This was totally optional. This There was not a mission to, like, make a minecart that traveled the entire island, but, uh... I wanted to. I thought it would be cool. I'm gonna look at the areas in order, so we're gonna come back to this pyramid place. <laughs> it, it, it looks a little wonky when she goes up a slope on the, on the minecart. It's a little abrupt. Alright. Here we go. Here's the first area that you would be building in the Isle of Awakening. I had to remove some rooms. I had to take the doors off of these because uh, that is one of, the one of the few flaws with the game is that there are limits, there are caps on certain things, including uh, room counts, crop counts, NPC counts. You don't usually hit, like, NPC limits easily. Unless you're breeding a lot of animals. Like, too many cows reproducing can let you hit your, uh, your character limit. But other stuff, like the room limit, is, uh, a little lower than I would like it to be. I, I would like higher or no limits in a future Dragon Quest Builders game. Unfortunately, it kind of has to... If it were just a PC game, it'd be one thing, but... I think that the limits carry over from console versions that don't have the benefit of potentially as strong of hardware. So this is this is my room on the Island of Awakening. There's a There was a mission to build a room very high, so I just... I made a giant tree. And I live up here. It's convenient for, like, gliding down to places. I decided to build, like, my main... area on, uh... on that, that other island, that Buildertopia, Zelysium. So, I did not fully flesh out... the Isle of Awakening. There's still blank spots like this one around. But for the most part... I did a pretty thorough job with the Isle. It was like a little, uh, little lodge, a little monster lodge, because, again, monsters don't get access to regular beds. They're not allowed that right. Uh, rooms in this game are a little strange in that they are, in order to be a room, it just needs to be two blocks high and it needs to have a door. So, roofs are totally optional. In fact, in most cases, for gameplay purposes, it's better not to have roofs, get the, get, then you can, like, see inside easily. I decided to be thorough with uh, my, like, final island, because I wanted everything to look nice. But, uh, no, the game doesn't care if you have, like, roofs or not. I have a little park area with little animal pens. Built into the mountain.
you build this river as part of the game. The, 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 there was originally not a river here. It sounds more complex than it is, building the river. Uh, so you'll notice there's, like, no people here. I built everyone, like, their own special rooms and everything here on the Story Island before I later decided to move them to the, uh, their own... The, the final island, the one we looked at first. You know, it's not... It's even worse the fact that monsters need, like, hay to sleep on and not, uh... Not actual beds. Because they don't even use the beds. They mo most of the... Well, we saw some of them sleeping, but, uh... A lot of them just, like, don't care if you make them a room. Hello. Oh, here we go. So on the Island of Awakening, everyone has dialogue. That is a downside of having everyone on uh, that custom island, is that you don't get the... I, it's dialogue that I've obviously already seen a million times before, but... You don't get the spoken text box dialogue on the uh, on the custom islands. This is Wrigley. He is a worm that eats poop, and he's very useful. That Babs didn't have a girt nice maid. Thanks, Wrigley. He's weird. <laughs> All these fields, and no one is left to tend them. It's just the two lonely monsters that I. Maybe I didn't have room to send them to the other island. I like Wrigley. I wanted to bring him, but he won't He won't sleep in his bed. I, ba I make a room for him, and he doesn't care. He never uses it. I must, I must have just run out of room on the other island, is why there's still people here. Kitty. Get out of the way, Camara. Pet cat. Yeah, Jerobi. Now I'll go check out the pyramid. Pyramid is area two that you would normally build on the Isle of Awakening. I think there's still a couple people there. Well, people. I know there's at least one monster that I don't like. The room's in... It, it, it's more defensible that the rooms in here don't have ceilings. Since the whole place is covered. A lot of the same rooms that I later built on the, uh, on the main island. Because, again, I was... Just trying to cover every, uh, every type of room. Wow, that's sad. There's like a tavern with tavern music playing, and just fucking no one's here anymore. This island has become like an abandoned... It's a dead mall, is this island. It's just like, it's a sad golem lives here. Just sleeping. Look at him, he's so depressed. There's a little saber tooth that no one is taking care of. Two saber... Oh no, this one's a baby! It's okay. People have left. Nature is returning. Nature is healing. The animals have taken over. I keep pressing the wrong button. I keep changing tools instead of jumping. I keep I'm still pressing the wrong buttons. I wish the controls were better, like customizable. That is one other complaint I have with this game. I mean it's a weird complaint because if anything, it's because the controls are too customizable. Because you don't, like, just change the buttons. You assign every single action to a button. And unfortunately, that creates problems because it doesn't account for actions that use the same button. And so you, you, you really can't customize the controls as a result of that. Very obnoxious. Oh. Oh. This is floor one. 
Floor two is gold. These little, uh, these little scrolls are the regi residence register. Or what I can use to, uh, move characters around. It, why, it's just, yeah, it's just all animals. And a couple farmers left on this island. Characters on each uh, builder topia. Nope, cow four can remain. More rooms that were made for people who uh, are not here anymore because they moved to the other island. It's getting cramped. I'm going to go to first person for uh, these ones. A lot of similar rooms for the same people. Shower room. Bathroom. Tiny, cool toilet. It, it feels like it's all such a waste now that no one is here living in these rooms. Large, cheeky, neat and sweet bedroom. Who did this belong to? Will it still tell me? I don't think it will. Okay, no, it, it still has the, the listed resident, the original designated residence on the signs, even though they're not on this island anymore. large pyramid, but despite that, it's only really two stories. Uh, there is, like, uh... I think there was, like, a throne up here or something at one point. I had something up here. Now it's just kind of not... It's also... If I remember correctly... You have a, a couple choices for what you can top the pyramid with, and they're off-center. It's super annoying. I think I fixed it. I, I think I, like, took the trouble to make everything, uh... I moved everything, like, one block over so it looks right. And I got, like, a, a proper pyramid topper. Boy, it's frustrating if they let that fly in the first place in, like, the base game. Where is this? This is the back of the pyramid. I have various liquids all over the pyramid so that I have uh, all the different types of liquids in the game covered. You get a you get like an infinite liquid pot, and this is how uh, liquids work. Right now, I have lava. You guys good on lava? I suck that up again so it doesn't get too lava y around here, and uh, I'll fill my pot with muddy water. There we go. Now I have infinite muddy water in my infinite pot. There's one more room here. For the weird golem lady that I didn't really like. She wanted a huge, incredibly too fancy room. So I put her underground. She lives she lived underneath the pyramid. That this was Ophelia's room. And it's gaudy as hell. There's also this thing you may have seen that we parked in the garage on the other island. I'll get back to that because I want to complete the uh, I want to complete the minecart track. Which brings me to the reason that I ultimately decided to put everyone on one of the uh, the Buildertopia Islands, the custom endgame islands. Is because, even though this is one giant island, it unfortunately treats it 
because it's so big and it exists in three different areas, it treats it as basically three islands. And though I have this minecart track, the residents will not use it to go from area to area. Also, my controller seems to be having issues. Are we good? Controller? Let me unplug and replug. There we go. So, I even if I had it designed such that, like, this area would grow the food, and then another area would, uh, like, the pyramid area would be, I don't know, where people sleep or something, they would not travel from one area to the next. So, whatever area a villager is in, that is where they live and have, like, food and everything. And that kind of sucks, because I can't have, like, uh... I can't have the different areas serve different purposes and then just have people travel between them. They, they won't do that. Alright, get out. There we go. This is the third area that you would build in. And uh, the, as I previously mentioned, this is an area where you would be building a castle. And boy, did I. Not only did I build that castle... I thought, well, look at the look at this nice like green stone. I don't want to just build the normal stone. I want to use the green stone too. So I made a second castle for the monsters. That that's the monster castle over there. I'll take a, a quick romp around both of those. As quick as possible, I suppose. If I can remember my jump button correctly. This one, the, uh, this one is kind of laid out for you. In fact, it's laid out in a similar... Uh, I, th I think it's laid out in a similar shape to one of the castles in, in Dragon Quest II on NES. Maybe not, maybe I'm misremembering. But they do do that in a couple spots in these games. Is that they have a lot of areas that are, in fact... They're either one for one or they're heavily based on, like, actual tile maps in the NES Dragon Quests. And that's pretty cool. Toilet. Got a little garden out in the back side of the castle with a fake slime? Okay. Assorted little versions of the rooms we've seen before, with gates outside, outside areas. A skating rink, because, I don't know, I had to fill space somehow. Someone's still living. There's a human! Hello? Me lava? Uh, sure! How many people are here? Let, let me ring the bell. There's a statue here for some reason. Just a couple farmers. I don't know why they're here. Maybe I didn't like these two for some reason, so they didn't get to come to the island. Yeah, that creation station, a smithy, where I was apparently making glass. Armory with food in it. And weapons, what is this? Dragon's Bane. That sounds cool. A lot of cool sound and stuff in that chest. I hope they put good use to it. A little, uh, little kitchen. Castle cafeteria. That's another outdoor door. Another war room. This is the thing that keeps monsters away. It's like a seal of Erdrich or something. So if you pl if you place that on the ground in an area, then it will prevent mon it will stop monsters from spawning in that area. You know what? Let's get rid of it. 
Let's see what it's like for a little while with uh, monsters spawning as they normally would throughout the game. Does this not count as a chapel? Why is this not counting as a room? Is this not sealed? Maybe it's intentional. Maybe I didn't want this to count as a room. Maybe I hit my room limit and I had to, like, get rid of some rooms is what I had to do. There's a very long, narrow graveyard out here. A little outdoor path. And, just for convenience sake, <laughs> an access path from the kitchen to the roof of the castle where I put the farm. Again, would have liked for the farm area to grow the food and then bring it here, but they won't do that, so I had to do this. I had to put a farm on the roof of the castle to feed these people. I think someone... Yeah, I put some, I put some bedrooms up here, too. A cheeky room. So that uh, the two farmers would, like, live and continue to work up here. One of them, anyway. There's a little decorative room that doesn't count as a room. There's a tower in the center of the castle. Doesn't really go anywhere. But there's a little area we can do this with. We can hop out. And go back down to uh, where I was looking around the earlier floors. Did I go around the outside completely? Yeah, I did. This was the uh, the chapel and the uh, the smithy. Then the second floor has what is this? Oh, that's that goes to the other castle. Other rooms that uh, exist on the other island. Throne room. I already looked at the two uh, the two bedrooms. A spa. Every castle needs a spa. Oh, the other room. I ran out of space for bedrooms, so the rest of you sleep in here. This is that room. Oh, garrison. Get up. second floor. Where are you going with that cabbage? Where did you get a cabbage? Are you taking it to the armory? He's, uh, are the other chests full? Why are you putting cabbage in the smithy chest? I guess in theory I could have, like, moved everybody here just to see the place bustling again, but it's alright. I kind of like the dead mall feel. A lot of these rooms are kind of cramped. This is a very long, narrow bedroom compared to... Uh, I, I was able to uh, plan better in the other castle because I was building it from scratch and not off of a... Uh, not off a pre-existing design. These are all just very narrow rooms. What is this one? This is a tiny... This is a small room. Some characters like tiny rooms. It, it's weird that the, the size and fanciness preferences come in all varieties. Like, who wants a tiny room with no fanciness? This person wanted an enormous room with lots of fanciness. Am I going here? Yeah, I did. That's all the third story rooms. Is there anything else? Or I think this just goes up to the 
yeah, we've been here. This just goes up to the roof and to the tower. So that's this castle. Because it's based on a pre-existing design, it doesn't have a, uh... What are you doing up here? Get down. This one does not have the uh, path around the outside perimeter like the other one does. Or the uh, towers for ease of access. Yeah, this is where we came out from. Let's just get this little, little transfer area. A little tower. There are all the optional goals in the game that you can do. Again, lots of stuff to do in this game. I appreciate that. I, I can also appreciate something like Minecraft that gives you just, like, the creative freedom. Just, hey, this is your world. Go nuts. Do whatever you wanted to do. But direction is nice. It's nice to have, like, goals to work towards and to feel like you're making progress towards something specific as well. And this game is really good at that. You always have something to work towards and something to do. Uh, let me go back down. Let me go down to the entrance of the monster castle. I'm going the front door. Hello. You're not a friendly monster. All right. What are you doing over here? Are you following me? And are the other chests full? So now she has to walk over to the monster castle and find a chest in this castle to put cabbages in. I think that's what's happening. Why is this here? Was I using this? Weird. I must have just I must have just left it from when I was building the castle. I'm guessing this has a uh Yep, a Hargan's throne room. As opposed to a regular throne room. This one I made from scratch. This one was not based on the uh, previously designed castle blueprint. So similar to the castle on the other island, this one does have the, uh, the path around the outside. It's not quite as uh, refined, but it does have it. Don't worry, I'll go down there later. There's some nice looking windows. I'd live in a castle like this. I don't care if I have to share it with monsters. Does this... Did I just go up to the third floor? Wait, no, I want to go to the second floor first. Again, me confused by my own castle layout. Okay, yeah, here's the second floor. It's very unusual castle shape. Castle design, this one. I kind of prior... I think I kind of prioritized having the path around the outside at all times, and I still didn't do a very good job of it. What's even on this floor? There's a suspicious spa with a suspicious individual vibrating in the suspicious spa. He's getting nice and clean with all that blood. More hallways. Hallways everywhere. Infinite hallways. Uh, another, like, evil monster chapel. <laughs> another hallway. Gory grill house. The kitchen. I do kind of love the, the campiness of the monster stuff in this game. That you can just be Skeletor. Like, yes, I am evil. My entire place of residence will be evil. Oh, this is the chapel again. Floor three. A little, little balcony. Doesn't appear to serve any purpose, but... It's a nice balcony. 
Is there anything on this floor even? Hallways. Toilet. Tiny, f even monsters need to poop. It's a one by four toilet with a giant door. That is a silly design. Enormous flamboyant room. Comparatively simple room design. So back when the monsters lived on this island, this is where uh, this, these were all monster bedrooms. Except for this one. I think this is Malroth. Yeah. But most of these were, uh, were monster rooms. Which I, it's, it's obvious because of the, the bedding situation. This guy and the farm lady are just following me around. They're just so happy to see another human being. It's been so long since, like, anyone has been here. After all of the other islanders moved. I think that's everything. I th this castle is smaller than, the, like, the Giga Castle on the other island. So there's not as much here. A lot of the space is taken up by the exterior hallways and the, the hallways through the middle. There's not a lot of space left for rooms. Floor four. More rooms. Yeah, like a, like this, this guy runs a pub. Captain, yeah, Captain Whitebones. I think he's the, I think he's the curator of the museum now. A cheeky room. For Rick the zombie. Another very, very narrow bedroom. But whoever that was, I think I think that's MC, the hammer hammer guy. That's his preference for a tiny room. And then the uh, the giant flamboyant slime room. With maximum fanciness. Shabby throne room again. I reused a lot of the uh, the types of rooms. A lot of stuff that I, after I put a lot of work into this island, I just carried over the uh, the basic designs and stuff for the final island. And then there's the ceiling, floor five, where once again. Okay, so that that's why there's two human farmers here. There there's one human farmer on the on the roof of that castle and one human farmer who just lives in a shack on the roof of this ca this poor person. What's their name? Emily. Poor Emily just lives in like a wallless shack on the roof of an abandoned monster castle growing wheat and onions for nobody. At least it's nicely decorated with bones and flowers. And the bell. And presumably a tower that once again goes up to nothing in particular. It's just a place to glide from. Yeah. Just an empty room. A place to glide from. And, and the giant golem head is here. It's on this castle, in this one. I can jump and then glide, but I, I, I am still getting my buttons confused. I say again how nice it is to have this throughout, like, most of the game. As you're playing the game. feel this way about Minecraft even as it continues to update and add new features to the game. Like, it's afraid to... It's afraid to give the player too much convenience. And so they just kind of keep adding stuff to the game that, like, doesn't do anything or isn't actually helpful or that no one would really use.
Just kind of stuff that you look at and say, neat. And that's it. Like, like copper. No one uses copper. Or beehives, honeycombs that you can use to polish copper that you don't use and don't need to polish anyway. What are they doing? Why are they adding this stuff? Oh god. <laughs> These abrupt turns in first person. The mine track is a circuit. Bird. Just... It, it was it was not flapping a second ago. It was just kind of... There it goes. Just jittering. Oh. There's the train. Uh. Hmm. I think... This was originally where, like, you find the multiplayer portal. There is multiplayer in this game. It's not very robust. It kind of really just lets you visit other people's islands. That's about all it is. Technically, you can build together, but it's kind of inconvenient to, like, get set up. So I don't imagine most people ever do actually, like, ever do any, like, co-op building in this game to any serious degree. It would be great if in a hypothetical third game there was like a robust Get out of here. There was like a robust multiplayer that uh, was actually like made for people to play together and connect to each other easily. Animal Crossing has the same problem. Now I need to... Oh, okay. That's a little weird. That's a little unnatural, but you know what? It works. I have a little train now. Animal Crossing has that problem of the multiplayer just being so inconvenient that no one's really going to do... To, I, people use it for, like, buying and selling turnips, but you can't really, like make a habit of having people on your island all the time. And if they're there, they can't really do anything, so, like, who cares? Where was I going? Let me go back to the pier. Let me get the car, because I, I just want to do, like, a like a flyover of the island. I would love... Well, I'd love an Animal Crossing that is, like, made for people to play together, and it's, like, seamless and easy to just have people come to your island, or, dare I say, a co-op island where you build with friends, and you share the island with friends, and, like, stuff they do is impacted in your game. This is a thing that you get towards, like, the very end of the game. You just get a car. Not only a car... Not only a car, a flying car. Oh, wait, hold on, what is that? No, I'm flying car too fast. Cannot control. Go down. There we go. Ah, that's right, I have a little, uh... I have a little house to myself over here in the pyramid area as well. It's not much. There's a little little tower built around the the optional stuff tablet. With a convenient way to glide to the pyramid. It's it's not that convenient. Climbing up the ladder takes as long as walking over there would have. You could do it though. You get to the top easily. The Steam version of Dragon Quest Builders 1 added that thing like in Minecraft where if you walk to a ledge, you'll automatically walk up it. This game doesn't have that, so it's a weird getting it's a little weird getting used to having to jump up like steps like this all the time again. Oh. I guess that I guess that destroyed some sand. That's alright. Lift off. Go up. There we go. There's the uh, tree. The tree house from the farm area.
pretty, <clears throat> sorry, pretty decent draw distance for a game like this. I mean, it's very foggy, as you can see, but, uh, if you have a decent computer, this runs pretty well. Would not suggest the Switch version of this game. The Switch version drops frames a lot. It's a 60 FPS game that looks like 30 FPS on the Switch, is how many frames it drops. Alright, go down. The uh, buggy is also convenient because wherever you park it, it acts as a, another warp point on the map. Is it Green Guardians? A green, green Gardens, Scarlet Sands, and Cerulean Step. Those are the three major areas of the island. The three warp points. There's Mountain Top, but you never you never go there. That's just like a story area that you go to once and then never again. So to finish off. I'll go look around the actual story islands, because I called this the story island, but the meat of the game takes place on three chapters, and each one is like the length of a JRPG. This is an extremely meaty game that, unless you just, like, hate it, you will absolutely get your money's worth out of. And again, it has a... Uh, the jumbo demo for this game, the free demo, encompasses the entire first chapter, which is like 10 hours of gameplay. So you'll know if you like this game before you ever, like, spend a dime on it. Swim finals. That looks so nice! Man, I wish I had a, uh, a cruise ship. These, I these islands aren't a big deal. They're not going to be that interesting because... Uh, the Island of Awakening is not randomly generated and the story islands are not randomly generated. And the story is... The building in the Story Islands is uh, fairly directed. So most people's, like, th three chapters of Story Islands are going to look pretty similar. But I'll show it off anyway, because there are, uh, there are little differences in how people decide to go about the, the story chapters. Where's my... There it is. My glider wouldn't come out. And there's still people here. I generally brought over, like, the... Like, the proper named NPCs with dialogue and everything. I brought them over to the final island, but, like... Just the generic NPC models, like this one. They stay here. They, they work the, the farm. Who's this? There's, like, a regular NPC here. Who are you? Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the first island where you learn to farm. And uh, even though it's a story island that doesn't... You never really need to come back here after finishing the chapter. I, I cared enough to make it look, like, somewhat nice. Had these uh, big old fields for all the crops. Barn, some nice eating areas. What are these? There's still, like... There's still farmland. I guess pre-existing farmland that is tilled and never used over here. Uh, tiny little basic kitchen. Someone had a bedroom up here. I think it was the, the Saffron, is that her name? Now it's just... Now it's just a builder room. The giant tree is like a story thing. Don't worry about it. This is a spa? Yeah, this is the spa that... This is one of the blueprints that an NPC gives you. So this is 
I didn't design this. I, I laid the blueprint and then I placed all the blocks. That's the thing that sometimes happens as part of the story. And it just, just like a, it's a building with beds. Very, very basic straw beds. Very utilitarian, this island. I didn't do... I made the fields look nice, and I made the building look okay, but I, I obviously did not put, like, the love into this that I did the final island. Turlet. And that's just, that's like the settlement. There's a whole, like, map of the area. You do, like, quests, go around, find stuff, talk to people, etc., etc. It's, it's a full, you know... It's a JRPG chapter. Schloss. Is this Schloss? <laughs> Island 2 is the mining chapter. There's also the, uh, there's the, like, the prison escape chapter, which is, it's different from these three, because it's not the same length at all. It's, like, it's way shorter, and again, featured, like, no building. So, that's the chapter that I unintentionally dropped into when I did the, the one-off stream the last time I streamed this game. I also did not realize how short it was, so I was like, I was right at the end of the chapter when I stopped the stream. If I had known the length of the chapter, I could have at least finished the entire single chapter in that stream, but I didn't. I did do most of it, so if, for whatever reason, you want to see the least buildy chapter of the game with me playing blind, that stream, that video will, uh, it still exists. Will probably probably be on the end screen for this video. Look at him, look at that giant golem fella. This is where the giant golem head comes from. This is the town of Horny Miners. You'll learn how to mine here. You build a smithy, you, you refine materials. You learn how to you learn how to beef up. You get, you get, like, dumbbells, you work out. And most importantly, you learn how to spend time at the bar. You, you build many bars, including including this, like, Las Vegas, Hawaii resort-looking, like, pool bar. It is a pool, and it is also a bar. Hold on, let me, let me go up to the dancing... The dancing things. The, the, there's there's dancing, sp like uh, spots. Guys can do it too. They don't judge. What is this? Is it, this is the, the relaxation room, where you get the Dragon Quest Puff Puff. It's in the game. Uh, a couple bedrooms, a kitchen. You build three bars over the course of this chapter. There's the basic, the the bronze bar. Well, I didn't even like do a, like a decent floor for this bar. There's the bronze bar. There's the silver bar. And there's the final one, the gold bar.
Which, like, this is nice. No, it's very fancy. It's made of gold. It has three dancing podiums. But, despite how very fancy it is, I like the silver bar better. I, I kind of want the pool bar more. I'd spend time down there. Which everyone is. They know what's up. They like this one better. Like tavern music playing. A shower room that you can just look inside of. Scenic shower room. But we're the scenery! Yeah, I built a two-story structure here, which normally you don't do in this game. The game kind of discourages discourages you from building two-story structures because, you know, the lack of roof thing. It's just more convenient to not have a ceiling so that you can see inside rooms and get around easier. I still had some, like, workstations just sitting out. They didn't need a room. It wasn't important. I think this is the most directed of the chapters in terms of where it wants you to put stuff. Like, it tells you exactly where to build the gold bar up on the mountain. Yeah! Which, come to think of it, is probably why no one goes up there. Is because it's because it's a trek to go up there, and there's not even a pool. There's a pool at the, like, there's an easily accessible pool at the, at the silver bar. Why go to the gold one? It's not worth the trouble. On Mount Olympus. Nice looking builds. My buggy securely parked at the top of this uh, this little mountain here. It's not going anywhere. It's fine. And then the third and final story island. Again, not counting the prison, which you can't go back to after you leave, is uh, Moonbrook. Which I don't think Furrowfield and Crumbledon were actual locations in Dragon Quest II. I think those are original to this game, but uh, Moonbrook was a location in Dragon Quest II. I think the boss of Moonbrook in this game also is like a returning character from Dragon Quest 2. I like that. I like when spin-off games are not like totally irrelevant to an overarching like uh, world plot. How easy is it to get to the castle from the dock? I think I just have to like just walk over a mountain. That's all. Little room hanging out in here. I don't remember why. Yep, Moonbrook Castle was a location in Dragon Quest Builders 2. I'm sorry, in Dragon Quest 2. Dragon Warrior 2 on the NES. And it had the same layout as it does in this game. More or less. There was like a there was like a big fight with a like a, with a ah, what what do you call it a rail gun a magic rail gun that you built in this game. Can I still use it? Ah, oh, I can't use the 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 magic rail gun anymore. I could only use it for the the scripted or the story boss fight. Darn. Oh, hello. We just, uh, we training? In the training room? I see, you can kind of tell 
by how like cramped this is that it's based on the like the NES games map. There's a throne room. This is the fight chapter. That this is where you I mean there's like limited combat in this game already. The combat is not like a focal point of this uh this buildy block game. But there are elements of it, especially in the uh in like the town management aspects and like uh, getting better equipment to gear up your villages with so that they can protect the village themselves. There's a lot of space that I didn't use here. Like there's like an outline of a room that I didn't uh, didn't build. You got a pretty big area to work with here in Moonbrook. Who's down here? Uh oh. Someone watching fireworks? Oh yeah, I think I made like uh, there's a part of the chapter where you make fireworks cannons. And they'll use them. Can't see it very well from down here. Let's get a better look. Hey. Hello? You're you're dressed like Bulma. You're you're dressed like Genie Bulma. They're, they're so happy that, like, we saved the castle years ago. I guess they must be making the fireworks if, and just, like, coming up here and loading them. Because they're not, they're not loaded currently. I think there was a... Pretty sure I made a chapel somewhere around here. There's a graveyard over here. Maybe I tore down the chapel. I think I built it and then I needed the space for something else, so I got rid of it. The, ch the chapel was not uh, necessary to keep. Yeah, Moonbrook is gonna look... I get all, all, all the story areas. All the three main story islands are gonna look pretty similar across different uh, versions of the game, so. Nothing too, like, inspirational or unique about my Moonbrook or my Crumbledon or even my Furrowfield, but I wanted to show them anyway. Because I'm not gonna... I'm, I'm never gonna... This is a very, very long game. And I love it, but I'm never gonna do, like, a full stream of it, so... I just wanted to show off my areas, the things that I built, because I thought it would be cool to see them all. And that's all there is to the game. And that's not really all there is. There's a lot more that we didn't see, namely the actual, like, playing through the game, teaching the villagers to do stuff, arming them with equipment, having them farm, etc., etc., etc. Again, lots and lots and lots of stuff to do in this game. And I love it. I cannot recommend this game enough. Would recommend anyone watching this to check out the uh, the free demo on PC, on Steam, on Switch, or whatever you have access to. But that's it for me. That was me showing off my current favorite video game. Has been sin since it came out, pretty much. I hope you enjoyed seeing my little builds, because I enjoyed showing them off. I'll see you for our next uh, live stream, which will probably be this weekend. No, it's Friday. We're doing Pal World. So, see you then. <laughs>